Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at solving literal equations. So what are literal equations? A literal equation is an equation that has two or more different variables. And by different variables, what we mean is different letters. So for example, in this first equation, I have a 10x and a 5y. That's what I mean by different variables, okay? Now, when you're solving an equation, you need to have only one unknown which means one letter, one variable. If you don't have only one unknown, if you have more than one unknown, then you can't solve the equation. And by that, I mean, you know, we're used to when we solve an equation, we end up with a final numerical answer, like x equals 10. That's a final numerical answer. Well, when I have an equation like this, 10x plus 5y equals 80, I cannot solve this equation for a final numerical answer. So what does it mean to solve a literal equation then? When you're solving a literal equation, you're just rearranging the equation so that you isolate the variable they're asking you to solve for. So let's go ahead and use this first example here to see what that might look like. So let's say I ask you to solve this equation for y. Solve for y. That means at the end, I want this equation to read as y equals, and then I want the rest of the information to be on the other side of the equal sign. That would be solving for y, because that would be isolating y. It would be getting y alone. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to follow the same steps that we normally follow when we solve multi-step equations. Remember, when you solve an equation, you are working backwards. So you are following PEMDAS in reverse, reverse PEMDAS, or SADMEP, which is PEMDAS backwards, okay? So, remember some of you might struggle a little bit with remembering left side, right side when it comes to solving things. So, if you draw a line from the equal sign going down, then you see what's on the left and you see what's on the right. So, let's solve for y. That means I need to get y alone. So on the left side of this equation, I have a 10x and I have a 5 that are both keeping my y from being alone. So which one should I get rid of first? Well, when you're solving a multi-step equation, your first step is usually to undo addition or subtraction. So I have to get rid of 10x. Remember, if that confuses you, it's not the 5 because this 5 is right next to y and that's multiplication. So we're not touching that yet. So how do I get rid of a positive 10x? I'm going to subtract 10x. And just like with all equations, whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other side. So 10x minus 10x, they cancel out. On my left, I have 5y. And on the right, so this part is going to be a little strange if you're not used to literal equations. 80 minus 10x, you're used to being able to get a number out of that. But here, I cannot subtract 80 minus 10x. Why? Because 80 is a constant and negative 10x is a variable. And we cannot combine unlike terms. So what do I do? I just write it. 80 minus 10x. Okay? And next, in order to get y alone, I have to get rid of this 5. And this 5 is multiplying y. And so in order to undo multiplication by 5, I have to divide both sides by 5. So here, the fives cancel out, leaving me with y equals, which is what I want. I want y all by itself. And on the right, okay, I can't do much else, but I can simplify this. And the only reason I can simplify this is because 80 and negative 10 are both divisible by 5. If one of these numbers wasn't divisible by 5, then I really wouldn't be able to simplify it. But 80 divided by 5, okay, is 16. So I can have here 16 minus, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So I have 16 minus 2x. And since we divide it by 5, think about here, you know, divided by 5, divided by 5, divided by 5, this will be a 1. So my answer is just y equals 16 minus 2x. And so that is my solution. And again, when you're first doing this, it's a little strange because you're used to solving an equation and getting a final answer. But here, we did the best we could. We solved for y, which means we isolated y on one side and everything else is on the right-hand side. Now, sometimes 
we call solving literal equations, we call it rearranging formulas because we're taking well-known formulas like this one here, C equals two pi R. Hopefully you recognize this as circumference of a circle when you have the radius, okay? So solving or rearranging a formula means you are moving the pieces about so that you can get a formula telling you how to solve for a specific piece of the formula. So for example, let's say I ask you to solve the formula for circumference of a circle and solve it for R. So now instead of it saying C equals, I want to say R equals. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So again, if I think left side, right side, I see on the right, I have two pi R and I want to isolate R. So what is, what are two and pi doing to R? What's the relationship that they have with R? It's a relationship of multiplication. And so since they are both multiplying R, I don't need to undo them separately. I could undo them both at the same time. So in order to undo multiplication by two pi, I can just divide both sides by two pi. So here on the right side, the two pi's cancel out, leaving me with R, isolated by itself, which is what we want. And on the left-hand side, I really can't answer the question, what's C divided by two pi? I could just write it. And that is my solution. I have now solved this formula or rearranged this formula to show me how to find the radius. If you know the circumference, how do you find the radius? Well, you're gonna take the circumference and divide it by two pi. That's how you find the radius. So this is our solution. All right, two more examples. Let's go ahead and take a look at this next example here. AX minus BX equals C. So what if we need to solve this equation here for X? So we want to isolate X. So in this example, we actually have a little bit of an issue. We see here on the left-hand side of the equation, we have this expression, AX minus BX. So X is actually part of two different terms. And as it's written, there's no way I'm going to be able to get X alone if it's attached to A and negative B. Because since I don't know what A or B are, I can't really divide and separate them. Okay, so I have to kind of understand what I'm looking at and how we ended up with AX minus BX. And this actually is the result of distributive property. AX minus BX comes from X times A minus B. If you think about that, if I multiply A minus B by X, right? I'm gonna say, okay, what's X times A? AX. And then what is x times negative b? Negative bx. So that's how we ended up with ax minus bx is distributed property. So for the purposes of this equation, what we actually have to do is undo the distribution. So to actually go from this back to this. And that is called factoring. Okay? When you factor, I'm going to take AX minus BX, and I'm going to divide this by the common piece of each term. So each term has an X, so I'm going to divide by X. So the piece you're dividing by, X, goes outside the parentheses, and everything else remains inside. So AX divided by X, that's A, and negative BX divided by X, that's negative B. So now our equation looks like this, x times a minus b equals c. And believe it or not, at this point, we only have one more step to perform. And in order to get x alone, think about it, I have to get rid of a minus b in parentheses. And what's the relationship here? It's a relationship of multiplication. And how do we undo multiplication? By division. So to isolate x, to get x alone, I have to divide by a minus b. And I have to do the same thing on the other side. And so on the left, a minus b divided by a minus b, they cancel out. And that leaves me what I want, x equals. And once again, on the right, 
I can't do anything else with this. I don't know what C is. I don't know what A is. I don't know what B is. So all I can do is write it. So solving this equation for X, I end up with X equals C over A minus B. And that is my solution. All right, one last example. Here we have the formula for perimeter of a quadrilateral. Perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width. So what if I were to solve or rearrange this formula for W? That means I want to rewrite it so it says W equals. So let's think about our process and what we just learned from this third example we did here. I need to isolate this W, but I can see here on the right side of this equation, I have an addition expression, 2L plus 2OW, and both of these terms have a 2. So I'm going to actually need to factor again. What can I factor out? I can factor out the 2. So I'm going to divide 2L plus 2W by 2. So that looks like this. 2 outside the parentheses, the parentheses and on the inside, what's 2L divided by 2? L. What's 2W divided by 2? W. So when I factor 2L plus 2W, it becomes 2 times L plus W. Bring down the rest of this equation. And so I can go about now the process of isolating W. Now, normally, you would undo addition or subtraction, which would tell you to get rid of L. But I can't because L plus W are a package deal right now. They're packaged together in this parentheses. So in order to open the package, in order to break them free, I have to remove the reason why they're packaged together. Why they're packaged together? Because they're being multiplied by two. How do I undo multiplication by two? I'm gonna divide by two. These twos cancel each other out. On the right hand side, I'm left with L plus W, I, don't, I no longer need the parentheses. And on the left, I don't know what P divided by two is because I don't know what P is, so I just write P divided by two. And if you haven't figured it out yet, so one last step to get W alone is to get rid of this L. So how do I eliminate this L? This is an, a relationship that is addition. So since it's a positive L, I'm going to subtract L from both sides. My L's cancel on the right, leaving me with W alone, which is what we wanted. And on the left-hand side, I can't answer what P divided by 2 minus L is, because I don't know what P is, and I don't know what L is. So all I can do is write it. So that looks like this, P over 2 minus L. And that is our solution. So if I know the perimeter of a quadrilateral, how do I find the width? Well, I'm going to take the perimeter, divide that by two, and then subtract the length. All right, I hope that this video helped you to understand solving literal equations or rearranging formulas.